Hello, I'm Cient here, and today I want to talk about religion and world building and video games and that sort of stuff. So for context, I am Christian, non-denominational Protestant. There's a lot of that that influences my viewpoint, but um, I want to talk more broadly than just kind of from that perspective, but just for context. Uh, so I'm going to break religion uh, just in general as a concept into several different categories or several different aspects, several different things to talk about. So the first is really important. It's the organizational model. Uh, so it's kind of asking the question, how is it organized? How is it structured? Why is it organized and structured that way? Uh, what claims does it make about its world? About blah. What claims does it make about the world and how does it affect people? Uh, and also kind of what, is, what are its goals? That's also kind of really important, but we'll get into that more a little bit. Um, so the first thing to kind of address with this organizational aspect is that religions are constructed to kind of serve different purposes in society. And uh, I think it's really important here to note that, like, it might be structured for a specific goal or purpose, but that doesn't mean that people won't, like, twist it to try to serve a different purpose. It's something that happens a lot. And Christianity itself is a really good example of this. It's, Christianity is not designed to be a theocratic religion. It's not meant to be for ruling but it definitely has been twisted and distorted into that shape. And that's something that human beings have done because religion is a very effective way to try to gain political power. And Christianity is not designed for gaining political power, but people have twisted it into that shape. So, and, and just talking about some shapes, there's uh, a, several different ones that I want to bring up as ideas here. So the first one, which I already mentioned, is theocratic. So this is a religion that, this is, a religion that is designed to rule people uh, so often what you're going to have is some sort of priest, uh, a high priest or some sort of chief priest or, or whatever um, that is effectively the head of the government. And everything's ruled very much so through religious organization. Now, in a fantasy setting, it's very reasonable to have some sort of manifest deity in charge of a theocratic state. That is a very reasonable thing to do. Um, but theocratic states are going to have some specific aspects to the religion that um, other forms of religion often don't have. And this is particularly, there's going to be some sort of legal framework for governing. Uh, so Islam has this, Judaism has this. Um, those are sort of the religions that I'm more familiar with. So Judaism in particular I'm familiar with. Uh, and that, you see Leviticus numbers, all of that has a bunch of laws in it for the governance of Israel. And so there's a bunch of stuff in there about how like justice is handled, um, all of those sorts of things, uh, particularly law needed to run a state, as well as religious law and things like that. Um, and then down from a theocratic system is just a state religion. So often this is going to be a situation where the head of state and the head of religion are separate individuals, where theocratic is their singular. So, for example, you have a king who's the head of state, and then you have some sort of, like, pope or bishop or, you know, high priest type character that is the head of religion. And so there's going to be a lot of intertwining between these, uh, and there's going to be some overlap with theocratic religion. But in this sort of situation, the religion does not have to have um, secular type laws. It does not have to have any sort of uh, laws for governance, because that is taken care of separately. However, it is the, the official religion. And then kind of another step down from that is organized religion. So this is where there is a hierarchical structure. Uh, it is very reasonable to have different denominations or branches or whatever of the same sort of religion. Like they're worshiping the same deity or pantheon or whatever. Um, but there's different approaches to doing that. Uh, and again, we see Christianity has a bunch of different denominations very wildly different, very wildly different uh, structures for that as well. Um, Islam has different denominations. Uh, Buddhism, I know, has different sorts of... Um, I don't know what they call them. But you can see where in real-world religions, it's the same sort of, like, focus of worship in, in real-world religions, but expressed differently. Um, and with different focuses on, on how they're approaching that religion. So that's something that can be very reasonable. Um, 
But when I'm talking about organized religion here, I'm specifically referring to something that's a step down from state religion. So like the situation we have in the United States where there is no state religion and there's a bunch of different religions around, many of them are very organized. Um, and then down from that is kind of the idea of like a decentralized. So this is going to be something where there is a cohesive set of beliefs, but they're kind of, there's no like central authority per se. Um, so this is kind of like another step down. And then there's like a local where these are local deities that are being worshipped. It's really important, um, if this is the case, that it's a local thing, um, it's really important to ask, are the deities localized entities? So this might sound kind of odd to some people, but this was actually like a massive focus of how things were in Old Testament times, that you had like the gods of the Canaanites and um, the Philistines and these different groups would have their own set of deities, right? And they'd be localized to their areas, believe they're attached to the soil or things like that. And so you'd have localized deities that were like for a particular group and you'd have a lot of uh, favoritism that way and that sort of thing. So that is how, uh, that, that is a model of how religion can work as well. Or you can have different things that where there's localized stuff or like... Um, this particular like lesser powered being probably but is in charge of like this area and the people who live there really care about that being but people who live far enough away outside of that being's uh, range of influence don't really care about it like so you can have some of that stuff as well so that's kind of talking about the organizational aspect and there's probably more models that you can have for religion but those are some that i was kind of thinking about and then we kind of get to What's really important is a personal aspect of religion. So what does it mean to be a follower of this religion, right? So it's, it's really important to ask this question, how does the religion influence the individual? How do they interact with their religion? What influence does it have on them? And furthermore, what sort of relationship does an individual have with a deity? So a really important question is, can an individual have a relationship with the deity or, or pantheon or whatever that this religion is focused on? For example, can somebody have, say, a personal relationship with Hermes? Can a person have a personal relationship with, you know, whatever your fictitious god is, uh, if you're, you're running with fictitious deities here? And if so, what is that like? Does it require a priestly mediation, right? Is it priests can interact with the deities because they have to go through certain rights or whatever to be able to uh, be connected to these deities to be able to interact with them and the lay person has to go through a priest like this is how things were generally run in uh, in judaism right there would be priests that would interact with god and then people would go to the priests and go to them for that interaction there would be very specific individuals that this relationship would go through versus Christianity is supposed to be a personal relationship with God. And there's a whole lot of stuff there that uh, if you care more about it. Um, that's something that I, you can ask in comments or whatever geekdom of God that I do also cover some of that stuff, but there's different ways that these relationships can, can develop. And like, how is this religion? How is this religious belief influencing this individual? And this is a really important point of faith. A lot of what my experience with faith is, is how does it affect my behavior when I act in accordance with the belief that the deity that I believe in is real? And when I believe in what that deity has claimed that he's going to do and things like that, that has a huge impact on how I behave, what I do, um, and how I see the world. Therefore, it's really important to ask the question for fictional characters in an area where they have a deity, how and have religion how is this impacting their behavior and not just a faith stat maybe a faith stat indicates how likely they, do, they are to act in specific ways or things like that and there's all sorts of stuff to, to kind of figure out there but just something to think about um and then another really important part very important part of religion is what does it believe right what are the beliefs why does the religion believe them for example um there can be any number of things that the religion believes, they have to have some sort of origin. Now, it might not be something that is like the purpose or the reason for it might be something that could be lost to time a little bit. But it's important to ask that question. 
um, and to kind of figure out what the beliefs are, but why they're there. Uh, and then another really important question is, what rituals does the religion have, right? What purpose do they serve? They always have a reason for being. Again, just like with beliefs, there can be some kind of wonky stuff there, but there can be hidden reasons for them to exist, and there can be any number of reasons why those are hidden. I think a really good example, again, from my context, what I'm familiar with with reading the Bible, is Jewish uncleanliness law, so something being unclean. There's a lot of religiosity attached to that, but I think it's really important to examine the purpose of them was most likely because they influenced and... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? But anyway, they um, they encouraged the people in hygiene practices, right? It was all about hygiene. Unclean had religious connotations attached to it, but it was a very literal thing. Like, this would make you unclean. This would, like, taking care of this, making things clean would help stop the spread of disease. But they didn't really have like germ theory and all that sort of stuff. And you can see that how that played out with things like uh, during various plagues when Jews would not get as sick and they wouldn't be as influenced by the plague because all of these um, cleanliness laws were influencing them to stay cleaner and get less sick and stuff. So um, important to kind of think about what's going on with, uh, with some of these. And presumably your deities um if you have real deities are influencing this what are their goals for various rituals what are their purposes why do they want them again going back to judaism one of the big things that you see with a lot of the sacrifices the regular sacrifices is that it provided food for the priests because most of the time and this is not just judaism but most of the time from what i understand um animal animals that were sacrificed to deities would then be eaten like if you read um i think the odyssey and iliad might talk about some of that stuff too but uh it was a very common practice to sacrifice an animal to a deity and then eat the meat right and um the sacrifices that were directed to, for the jews to do um or the israelites as they would have been more known or hebrews at the time one of the big purposes of that was that the those sacrifices of things like uh, wine and olive oil and flour and meat would go to the priests, right? And that was a way to provide for them. So there's a very clear purpose there. So it's just something to think about of like, what are these accomplishing? What is their purpose? And then another really important question is if there are rival religions or rival branches of the religion, how does it interact? Like, what are those relationships? How do things play out? Sometimes it can be uh, very peaceful and cooperative. Sometimes it can be very violent, uh, we certainly can see um, that there has been a lot of violence between Protestants and Catholics in Christian uh, history or um, th things like that in various religions where uh, there are splits and rifts that cause a lot of conflict. Again, if you have a more actively, like obviously an overtly active deity, how are they going to interact with that stuff too? It's important stuff to think about. And then this is an, a question that might not be considered, but it's a really important one to ask. Does the religion have a policy of active conversion or is it a passive conversion? So what I mean by this is some religions are established for people and other people can come in and participate in it if they want to, but they don't have to and they're not trying to proselytize. They're not trying to spread the religion. A really strong contrast of this actually is Judaism and Christianity. Judaism is a passive conversion religion, i.e. it's not actively trying to convert people, right? It's not, you don't hear about Jewish missionaries, generally, as far as I'm aware, uh, trying to go out and convert people to Judaism. People do con convert to Judaism, and they're not kept out, but, you know, it's not a religion that's actively trying to convert people in general principle. And... In contrast, Christianity is an active spread religion, right? It has specific language talking about going out and converting people. And so that is a huge difference. Like, it influences how the religions react, uh, how the in religions act, what they're trying to accomplish, and it's part of their goals. It's part of what's baked into the mission of that religion. And so we can see that there's different ways that religions are interacting with this um, process of continuation right where one is just like yeah okay people born to believers 
uh, are basically converted, but they don't actively seek converts from outside, whereas some others do. And different religions handle this sort of thing differently. It's really important to, to kind of ask. And then kind of like the final thing, which I think I've talked about some, but it's important to understand what your religion's goals are and what's trying to accomplish. So, um, and again, how your deities behave is going to really influence the religions that develop around them. So that's really important to keep in mind. And um, make sure, like, because I think it leads to stronger world building to do this. Make sure that you're considering and being intentional with your deities and what they're trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, how they behave and act, and all that sort of stuff, and how the religion comes about as a result of it, and having consistency, and not just like throwing random stuff in there for no good reason. Um, and this is actually another uh, really important thing to keep in mind is what sort of religious iconography they have, um, and how that might even change over time. Like Christianity was originally represented with a fish, and it's, it's become a cross over time. Uh, in part because I think distance uh, was necessary for that sort of change to happen. Uh, as a complete aside, my personal preference it would actually be a fish, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but just thinking about what sort of iconography they use, what sort of symbolism they use, and that sort of stuff is also really important to think about. So uh, just defaulting to a cross doesn't make any sense because the cross is a, a religious symbol and Christianity came about for a very specific reason. So anyway, that's just all sorts of stuff to think about. And um, I definitely like seeing world building that takes a very hard look at how religion works and and what principles underlie it and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, it's one of the things that I really appreciate about Lord of the Rings um, or Middle Earth or, or whatever we want to call it. And Tolkien's work is that he does have a lot of consideration of religion and like, Gandalf, for example, is basically uh, like an angel, sort of type of day, uh, type of uh, figure, um, and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's just really interesting to to think about sort of the supernatural power structure and how they interact and how they relate and um, how do they relate to sort of the ordinary beings and how do the ordinary beings sort of relate to them and uh, all of this sort of stuff. And it's something that that I'm passionate about, and I think that probably shows through through these couple of episodes here. Um, and something that I that I want to uh, see explored more as well. So anyway, those are going to be my thoughts, and I'm going to go and wrap up here. So until next time, everyone, take care. Bye-bye.